So as promised, here's part two. You may have seen that a number of different uh, medications uh, that are major tranquilizers are now advertising themselves as supplements for depression to be added to a regular depression medicine. So I did want to review those a little bit um, just because um, there does seem to be, you know, mixed, mixed evidence on that. So here is aripiprazole, um, which is Abilify. And in the three studies that have been done, I find it very interesting that in the Toronto study, there was no benefit at all. In the Pittsburgh study, fairly substantial benefit. The odds um, really did seem to change. Uh, and then in the Washington study, about the same. So there does seem to be some benefit in two out of three studies. Um, the problem is, is that the actual reduction uh, in uh, the score was that uh, in the uh, folks in the um, study that I'm looking at here, their, their score on a scale of 0 to 54 went down from 8.29 to 6.33. So two points on a scale of 54, pretty modest benefit. Um, the dosing of one milligram did not have um, any effect. Um, and so, you know, on the disability scale, the scores went from um, 0.49 to 0.48, which was a, you know, very modest but statistically significant benefit. So there is some benefit, it seems. The problem is, is that if we look at the um, involuntary movement scale, um, we can see that there is a little bit of a difference there, although it isn't really statistically significant. Um, we are showing a, uh, a statistically significant uh, change on the akathisia scale. So maybe some benefit, but um, you know, I think I think the jury's out on that one. Uh, I have had a couple of patients that I've tried it on. They seem to benefit. There's enough data to try it, but um, whether it's placebo effect, I'm not sure. I'm also wondering why didn't it work in Canada? I don't know whether, you know, there's some difference in uh, the way that they did the study or what it was, but we have to figure that one out. So Zofluza is a medicine uh, which is used for influenza. It's supposed to shorten the flu to two days. Um, it's a totally different mechanism. Uh, Tamiflu is a neuroamidase uh, inhibitor, uh, which might be better against uh, H1N1. Um, but the Zofluza um, uh, is an endonuclease inhibitor, so it only works on influenza. Shouldn't have any side effects. Cost is about $159. Um, if you're over 80 kilograms, you get two pills. If you're between 40 and 80, you get one pill. No data on children. Half-life seems to be pretty long, so maybe that's why the benefit is so long after the single dose. Um, no data specifically on the use in the elderly. It was recently approved. Uh, I have seen it listed. I have actually not seen a patient receive it yet though, so I'll be very interested to see how that plays out. So monoclonal antibodies. Um, most of the medicines that are coming out that are getting a lot of advertising time on television end with the three letters MAB. And that MAB stands for monoclonal antibodies. And basically, these are autoantibodies or antibodies that are, are designed to um, attach to a specific molecule in the body. Um, they're also used for testing in the lab. They're used for the illicit test and the pregnancy test. A lot of the early work was trying to deliver a toxin to a specific type of cancer cell. So they programmed them basically to attack a cancer cell. Now we're programming them to attack um, things like TNF-alpha. Uh, which is tumor necrosis factor alpha, which is an inflammatory molecule that occurs in people with rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, and ankylosing spondylitis, um, as well as a number of different uh, molecules. And we'll, we'll talk about um, a bunch of those. So just to go back to the basics, the original monoclonal antibodies were actually developed in mice. Um, the other name for mice is murine. Uh, and any of the ones that are still produced in mice, you'll see the um, last five letters are M-O-M-A-B. Chimera, um, which 
the picture on the previous slide was a chimera. A chimera is in uh, mythology a beast that had um, elements of three different animals. You know, it had the head of a lion and the tail of a snake and the body of something else. And so that's what a chimera is. Now, a chimeric uh, monoclonal antibody, which is basically part mouse, part human, um, will actually end up with XIMAB. Now, they have been able to humanize um, the mouse um, uh, molecules to the point where they are almost identical to the human, and in fact, in some cases, essentially identical to the human. The ones that are almost identical end in Zumab, and the ones that are essentially identical end in Mumab. So by looking at the last five letters of a monoclonal antibody, you can actually see how it was developed. So one that we're seeing a lot on television is Keytruda. Uh, Keytruda does seem to improve um, survival rates in a certain cancer, um, certain type of lung cancer, non-small small cell. Um, if you look at the small print on those ads, the survival goes from 40 some odd percent to 50 some odd percent. Now that's not a dramatic change, but if you happen to be in that 10% improved survival, that's pretty pretty exciting. Um, so you can see that this is a Zumab drug um, and um, it is specific for cancer. Now the cancers that we're using it on now are not just this um, non-small cell lung cancer. We also use it on melanoma. There's a head and neck squamous cell cancers that we're using it on and also classical Hodgkin's lymphoma it's effective for. It's being advertised for um, cancer of the lung because that's the most common of these four cancers and they're trying to get people to use it. It actually uh, binds to PD ligands, um, which are found on the T cells and inhibits those T cells um, and actually you know, prolongs life a bit. The TNF alpha medicines that are most commonly used, these are the ones as you know, for Crohn's or ulcerative colitis or rheumatoid arthritis, are the Remicade, the Simzia, and the Humira. There's an interleukin-23 med that's used for um, uh, psoriasis, um, Tremphia. There's a uh, immunoglobulin E, which is used for really severe allergies in someone who is having respiratory issues, that's the Zolair. There's a CR, uh, CGRP uh, medicine uh, that's used for migraine. You can see that TALTS is, um, affects interleukin 17A. And there's also EGFR for cancer. This is an older drug, as you can see, because it's still a Zymab rather than a Zumab. Um, but these are used also for a metastatic colorectal cancer, as well as uh, non-small cell, as well as, as well as the head and neck cancers. There is a um, medicine that's been specifically designed to attack interleukin-2. Interleukin-2 is especially important in uh, kidney transplant rejection. Uh, so by blocking this interleukin, it does decrease the probability um, these medicines that attack specific um, monoclonal antibodies are much less likely to cause side effects than the non-specific uh, type medicines that we currently use for kidney transplant rejection. Uh, CD50, uh, the B lymphocytes uh, for uh, rheumatoid arthritis, but also for cancers, rituxan. Uh, there's a um, monoclonal antibody that's used for respiratory syncytial virus. Unfortunately, respiratory syncytial virus really doesn't have much for treatments. This is not even an effective treatment, but it is a pretty effective preventative if you have somebody that is high risk for RSV. Um, they can have this medicine, you know, so it is restricted to premature babies who are still very young, uh, bronchopulmonary dysplasia babies, um, and babies with uh, congenital heart disease. Uh, the uh, uh, GP2B3A receptor on the platelets, um, which is Reapro, um, this is a medicine that's used predominantly inpatient 
um, but it is a mon another monoclonal antibody. Um, denosumab is a monoclonal antibody that binds to the um, rankle, um, which is the uh, um, substance that is um, important in um, osteoclasts um, by um, bonding to the surface of those. It basically uh, makes them less effective and it decreases the amount of bone that's broken down. Uh, it works similarly to the bisphosphonates, but not exactly the same. Um, but it will decrease the bone reabsorption and increase the bone mass a little bit. Uh, it is still something that works on osteoclasts. Unfortunately, there's only one medicine that works on osteoblasts, um, and that one has a lot of side effects, but uh, this is um, an option for somebody with osteoporosis. Um, does seem to be a bit more effective than the bisphosphonates. Uh, other folks, I, I don't prescribe this a lot, but I have other folks in my office that are doing this quite often. If somebody uh, actually has osteoporosis on their bone density, it seems to be getting approved. Uh, there's a um, veterinary interleukin, which is interleukin-6 uh, monoclonal antibody. So um, for dogs and cats that are having a lot of itching and skin problems, um, I think this one probably will eventually make it into a human form. Now there's another medicine, which is a TNF blocker. Um, it is not a monoclonal antibody. It works in a different mechanism. Um, but it's used for similar things. Uh, this is the one that Phil Mickelson advertises a lot on television, the golfer, um, which is supposed to make his psoriatic arthritis better. Zalgians is also another medicine that's used for psoriatic arthritis, as well as rheumatoid arthritis, as well as ulcerative colitis. It actually works through a slightly different uh, mechanism. Rather than a monoclonal antibody, it's actually a, a JAK1 or a JAK3 inhibitor. Um, uh, JAK is, you know, another type of uh, antibody that occurs in the body, uh, and it basically um, interferes with, um, you know, with these growth factors.